Hello everyone, in this lesson we will analyze the meaning of the measurement of a physical quantity in a quantum system. This is the key problem of quantum physics, as it is precisely this aspect that has raised profound philosophical questions, and has challenged the common idea of the objective existence of reality. We will also understand what quantum entanglement is, and see how this effect has dismantled the criticisms against quantum physics raised by famous physicists, such as Einstein himself. In classical physics, when we make a measurement, we simply become aware of a property that was already possessed by the system, even before we measured it. In contrast, in quantum physics, the physical system generally does not possess determined values of measurable physical properties, such as position or velocity. However, if we carry out a measurement, we will always find a determined value. The key idea is that, every time we measure a physical quantity, we modify the system, causing its transition from the initial indeterminate state, to a final state which corresponds to a determined value of the measured physical quantity. This means that when we measure a physical property, we change the state of the system, making a property that was previously indeterminate, determined. This process is called collapse of the wave function. In quantum physics, the properties we observe, exist only at the moment of observation, while before it, the same properties are intrinsically indeterminate. The measurement is therefore, not an act of verification on the system, but an act of generation of the physical properties of the system. For example, in the left figure, the initial wave function represents a delocalized state of the quantum. Assuming to carry out a measurement of its position, and to find the quantum in a certain position, then its wave function must localize to that point, because the probability of finding the particle at that point has become 100%, while it's zero elsewhere. To better understand what is meant by collapse of the wave function, let's consider the example of the tunnel effect. As we have seen in the last lesson, we consider a quantum moving against a barrier. There are two possible cases. For example, in this figure the quantum is about 40% likely to cross the barrier, and 60% to bounce back. The essential point is that the quantum has not split into two parts. If we put a detector, we will always find it in one piece either on one side or the other. It is only the wave function that has split to represent these two possibilities. According to quantum physics, before detecting the position of the particle, it is neither to the right nor to the left, because it is in an indeterminate state. This means that the quantum has no position, because the quantum is not a point particle in that indeterminate state, and position is a property of point particle only. We can describe such indeterminate state through a wave function that is expressed as the sum of two parts. One that describes the possibility that the particle bounce to the left, and the other, the possibility that the particle cross the barrier. Suppose we place a detector to the right, to determine if the particle has crossed the barrier. If the detector finds the particle, then the particle will have a 100% chance of being beyond the barrier, and therefore will have a 0% chance of being to the left of the barrier. After the measurement, we will therefore have to cancel the wave function in the whole region to the left of the barrier. On the other hand, if the detector does not find the particle, then the particle will have a 100% probability of being to the left of the barrier. And therefore, we will have to cancel the wave function in the whole region to the right of the barrier. The fundamental point, is that we never observe a particle that is 50% on one side, and 50% on the other, but only a particle that is 100% on one side, or 100% on the other. If we want to represent the particle after the measurement, it is necessary to reinitialize the wave function in the position in which we found it which means that we have to collapse it. The collapse of the wave function is necessary for the Schrödinger equation to make sense and provide correct predictions about observed phenomena, but the problem is, that it violates the Schrödinger equation itself. The collapse of the wave function is imposed by the physicist by hand, so to speak, that is by not solving the Schrödinger equation, as it happens at any other instant. In fact, according to the Schrödinger equation, the collapse should not happen. In quantum mechanics, the Schrödinger equation has the same role as the three principles of dynamics in classical mechanics. Which means that it represents the fundamental physical law, which determines the evolution over time of the wave function of any physical system. The collapse of the wave function, therefore, is a non-physical process, because it violates the very laws of physics. The problem of collapse has paradoxical consequences, in the case of hypothesizing that a quantum process can have direct consequences at the macroscopic level. It was precisely to highlight these paradoxical consequences, 
that Schrodinger elaborated Schrodinger's famous paradox of the cat. The essential point of the paradox, is to hypothesize a macroscopic apparatus sensitive enough to be triggered in conjunction with a microscopic process. Schrodinger thought of a device that would break a vial of poison, following the decay of a single radiative atom. If the device is locked in a box with a cat, then the cat will die as soon as the radioactive atom decays. To understand this paradox, it is necessary to know that the decay of the radioactive atom does not occur at a well-defined instant, but like all quantum processes, is linked to a probabilistic law. It is possible to establish that at a certain instant the atom will have 50% probability of having decayed and 50% of not having decayed. Just as in the case of the tunnel effect, the state of the radioactive atom, as long as it is not observed, will be neither decayed nor not decayed, and its wave function will be the sum of two parts, one that describes the decayed atom, and the other that describes the not decayed atom. The cat, the cyanide vial and everything contained in the box are physically a set of quanta, which state is defined by a certain global wave function. This wave function will be different in the case in which the vial is broken, and consequently the cat is dead, from that in which the vial is still intact, and the cat is alive. Since the breaking of the vial depends on the decay of the atom, the global wave function of the system can be described as the sum of two functions, one corresponding to the dead cat and the decayed atom, and the other corresponding to the live cat and the non-decayed atom. The crux of the matter is that as long as the wave function does not collapse into one of the two states, the cat is neither alive nor dead, because its state is indeterminate, just as the state of the atom is indeterminate. The meaning of the paradox is precisely to show that if the Schrödinger equation is always valid for the evolution of the wave function, we inevitably arrive at a situation in which the cat must necessarily be neither alive nor dead. The indeterminate state of the cat is often defined by saying that the cat must be both alive and dead at the same time. Actually, this is a nonsensical expression, because the wave function represents two possibilities, and not two realities. For this reason, it is said that quantum mechanics does not describe reality as something existing, but as a set of potentialities, that become real only in the moment of observation. For the cat to be in a determined state, dead or alive, the wave function must collapse. So, the Schrödinger equation must stop working at some point, for the wave function to collapse. But the problem is, when does the collapse occur? And what is the cause of the collapse? As we have said, the problem of the cause of the collapse is crucial because the Schrödinger equation, which summarizes the laws of quantum physics, neither determines nor predicts any collapse. This means that the collapse of the wave function cannot be considered a consequence of the laws of quantum physics, and therefore represents a non-physical process, which some would call supernatural. As we have said, the collapse of the wave function is the crucial problem of quantum mechanics. In fact, on the one hand it represents a violation of Schrödinger equation, that is, a violation of the fundamental laws of physics. On the other hand, it is necessary for the laws of quantum physics to make sense, and to be applied in the interpretation and prediction of the phenomena we observe. This is the inescapable contradiction against which, all attempts to reconcile quantum physics with realism, break. Let's say right away, that we often read that the solution to Schrödinger's cat paradox, is that macroscopic bodies do not follow the laws of quantum physics, and it would therefore be wrong to try to apply these laws to the cat. This is certainly false, because we know that macroscopic bodies are aggregates of quanta, and the laws of quantum physics certainly apply to macroscopic bodies as well. If we assume that the wave function has a physical meaning, that is, it represents an element of reality, then the problem of collapse is crucial, and in fact, despite the fact that almost a century has passed, there are still conflicting opinions on it. Let's see what are the prevailing opinions. According to some, the collapse would occur when the quantum system interacts with a macroscopic measuring instrument. This idea is certainly wrong, since even the measuring instrument is an aggregate of quanta, and should evolve according to the Schrödinger equation, and therefore could not cause any violation of this equation. Someone has observed that, the only entity that is not reducible to the laws of physics, is the mind or consciousness, and therefore, the observer, as a conscious being, should be the real cause of the collapse. This implies that the human mind must have this extraordinary power over the universe, an idea rejected by most physicists. For some, the conscious observer causing the collapse, is not man, but God. 
Another interpretation is that of the multiverse. Basically it is assumed that no collapse occurs, but that the Schrödinger equation represents not a single universe, but infinite universes, and a different universe must exist for each possibility predicted by the Schrödinger equation. In practice, the idea of the multiverse is based on the assumption that for every event that is possible by the laws of physics, then there must exist a universe in which that event occurs. This is equivalent to saying that if I decide to measure a certain physical property, for which the Schrödinger equation predicts infinite possible results, then there must be infinite me and infinite universes, and each copy of me decides to observe that same physical property, but each copy of me finds a different value, so that all possibilities are realized. Personally I think it is a very imaginative idea, but totally devoid of a rational basis. Moreover, the idea of the multiverse does not solve the collapse problem, because for quantum mechanics to be used after each measurement, it is necessary to collapse the wave function, otherwise the Schrödinger equation would give wrong predictions. To avoid the problem of determining the cause of the collapse, in the standard interpretation of quantum mechanics, a reality value is attributed only to observations, and it is assumed that before the observation, there is no physical reality, but only infinite potentialities, that is, possible realities. For someone, this means that physical reality exists only as a concept in the mind of God, who conceives the universe according to some mathematical structures, this idea recalls the vision of the Irish philosopher George Berkeley. For Einstein, who conceived physical reality according to common sense, quantum physics was always unacceptable because he realized that it was in no way compatible with his realist view. In fact, he wrote, All these fifty years of conscious brooding, have brought me no nearer to the question. What are light quanta? Every Tom, Dick and Harry thinks he knows it. But he is mistaken. If quantum mechanics is correct, it signifies the end of physics as a science. As we have said, Einstein has always firmly opposed to the idea that reality exists only in the moment of observation, because he believed in the objective existence of reality. For him, reality had to exist with all its properties even before observation, and therefore quantum mechanics was an incomplete theory, that did not correctly represent natural laws. The debate between Einstein and supporters of quantum physics, in particular Bohr, who was its spokesperson, lasted many decades. It was believed that the question could not be solved on a scientific level, and that it was therefore a question of subjective philosophical interpretations, a problem therefore not pertaining to the scientific sphere. But then an unexpected event occurred which radically changed the scenario. To understand what happened, we need to introduce the concept of entanglement. This is a peculiarity of quantum physics, which generally occurs when two quanta are created together, like two photons emitted by the same atom. In this case the properties of the two quanta are connected to each other, and remain connected even when the two quanta are at a great distance from each other. Suppose that for each of the two there are two possibilities, each with a 50% probability of being verified, as in the case of the atom that could have decayed or not decayed. Schrödinger equation admits solutions in which, although the state of each quantum is indeterminate, the states of the two quanta are always one the opposite of the other. There is no such thing as this in macroscopic objects because it is a state that is only possible in the formalism of quantum physics. To understand what we are talking about, we can imagine throwing two coins. The state of the coin will be defined as heads or tails only when it stops spinning, and each coin will have a 50% chance of being heads or tails. If the coins were in an entangled state, then every time the first was stopped and it would turn out to be heads, it should happen that instantly the second coin would also stop automatically, and it would be tails. This means that the observation of a property of the first quantum, has also changed the state of the second quantum, transforming its state from undetermined, to determined. And this can happen even if the two quanta are light years away from each other. Therefore, not only does the observation of a property change the state of a quantum particle, but it can also instantly change the state of another particle, at whatever distance it is from the place where we made the measurement. For Einstein this prediction of quantum mechanics was absolutely unacceptable, and showed that quantum mechanics incorrectly described the effect of measurement on a system. For Einstein the properties of any physical system always had to be determined, even before measurement, and the quantum oddities were due to the fact that quantum mechanics was an incomplete theory. For proponents of quantum physics, properties were indeterminate prior to measurement, and entanglement was a surprising but real property of the universe. For many years it was believed that the dispute between Einstein and the supporters of quantum physics, could not be resolved on a scientific basis, 
because it was not possible to design an experiment, capable of comparing the two different interpretations. In 1964, about 10 years after Einstein's death, Irish physicist John Bell shows that such an experiment is theoretically possible. In this photo we see John Bell indicating that the result of the experiment is less than 2, if the properties are determined even before the measurement, as Einstein believed, while quantum mechanics predicts that the result is 2 times root of 2. So the issue could actually be resolved on a scientific basis. The experiment is difficult to carry out, and it will be necessary to wait about 10 years, before it is performed for the first time by John Clauser. Since then, many similar and increasingly refined experiments have been performed, and all of them unquestionably confirm the predictions of quantum mechanics. So Einstein's common sense and realist view, is certainly wrong. The properties of the subatomic particles, and therefore the properties of the universe, may be effectively indeterminate before the measurement, and the measurement operation at one point in space can instantly affect another point, at whatever distance it is.